hair. It's not just on your head. It's not just billions of follicles. Not for everyone. It's your statement. The edge that gets you a job. The allure that gets you a date. The way you wear your hair telegraphs to the world that you're bold, brave, radical. Actress Tracy Tom said it right when she said, It's amazing that it's considered revolutionary to wear my hair the way it grows out of my head. Black hair is a big business, generating almost $9 billion a year. The culture around black hair is a complicated web of personal experience and historical significance. Hair is so tied into black culture, it is hard to separate the individual and the overall picture. Whether demonized or praised, black hair is constantly being critiqued, especially when it comes to black women. Black women's hair is under an even larger microscope. The intersection of race and gender, as it pertains to the beauty, is all in tresses. European standards of beauty are the default. Everything else is the other. But why is that? Why is it the way we wear our hair so revolutionary? Historically, black women have made a fortune off their crowning glory. Tracing back to the days of Madame C.J. Walker, where one black woman was able to not only make a fortune, but also an empire off black hair. She also helped train many black women to go into business for themselves. Some scholars saw this as the genesis of early feminist ideals. Without her presence, what black women know as the beauty salon, the mecca and safe haven for black women to not just get their hair done, but to talk about men, women, and gossip, and share and ultimately solve their problems, would not be what it is today. The cornerstone of black female solidarity is harnessed in the black beauty shop. Madam C.J. Walker also proved to black male activists like W.E. Du Bois and Booker T. Washington that black women can have their own life, while still being a mother and a wife. That a black woman's voice is just as important and worth investing in. The legacy of Madam C.J. Walker is one of pride amongst African American women. But one must understand that legacies are also inked with contradictions. Just as she helped usher successful black women into the 20th century, some have argued that she never promoted true pro-blackness. And why? Because her products were hair straighteners, hot combs, and pomades. For early black activists, hair was an indicator of not only your political stance, but of your blackness. That idea gained new currency in the 1960s and 70s, when the afro became the symbol of political awareness, thanks to the mother of all fly froze, Miss Angela Davis. Her halo of hair became a symbol of resistance. I'm black and I'm proud, and black is beautiful. Somewhere between the black power movement and contemporary times, hair becomes less a political indicator and more an individual preference. However, the struggle for acceptance is still a theme. The 80s and 90s ushered in multiple hairstyles for black women. It was about individual expression, and hair was the main indicator. At the turn of the millennium, there seemed to be another hair movement of sorts going on. The natural hair movement. With the help of social media sites like YouTube, Facebook, and WordPress, black women are promoting their homemade products, giving advice on how to care for natural hair, and doing tutorials on different natural hairstyles. Having this online community of black women passing on their knowledge is reminiscent of the black beauty salon experience. It has also shown the relationship dynamics between black women and others. Even how men treat women according to their hairstyle indicates that gender and sexuality do play a role in hair. Even in the media, we see the representation of black women with natural styles increase in the last couple of years. The laundry detergent commercial, we see the beautiful dark-skinned woman with her natural crop do. The political analyst with her own show on MSNBC donning box braids. To the younger sister of a mega superstar that has found her own footing in the entertainment business. Even with all the blogs, products, 
and increased media presence, we know that natural hair hasn't fully been accepted just yet. Black women, with all their complexities, make it too simplistic to say hair does or doesn't matter. They are cursed with being individuals, not a monolithic group. Playing the crooked rooms black women are raised in, hair may not matter to one person, but greatly matters to the next. However, this documentary takes a look at how African American hair, in all its versatility and variety, can and will be seen as a positive. I love my hair.